Welcome everyone to another Risk 5 live stream here on our channel. I recently finally got my hand to one of the cheapest current around 10, 15 dollar euros Risk 5 SPC, SPC small single board computer and that features the now uh, popular D1 all winner D1 Risk 5 CPU. And I wanted to point out one particular thing, which is rather unfortunate, actually, <laughs> kind of three, but one major thing. So that, of course, Raspberry Pi Zero sized and priced RISC V 64 bit single core up to one gigahertz, um, half a gig or a gig of memory. But yeah, only expect RISC um, Raspberry Pi performance. And this CPU core comes from actually T-Head Zemi of uh, Alibaba owned Chinese semiconductor. And they write here the process is advertised as being based on RV64GCV, G being general subset of RISC V, previous video, either video, C compressed and V vector instruction, right? Also turbo engine, uh, maybe more to this later. And so this is of course for the most part standard conformant or I have not run a test suit but advertised the standard conformant supporting risk 5 F float D double floating point IEEE 754 and V vector instruction vector register 128 bit of this new previous video that I like and praise so much risk 5 vector extension and there is very little information about this and nobody really is using this much. So I took a closer look and I found some horrible things. So because the CPU was designed around 2019, obviously it takes some years to design and then some years to market. So others found out um, while I doing the research and discussed it already years ago that the implications of widely distributed draft 071 implementations so it turns out this is not because obviously the risk 5 vector extension was only ratified recently and since the 2019 standard draft draft standard right it's a draft it's not like final revision it's a freaking draft and so they went ahead and implement that at the time on one thing I'm, I'm a little bit torn here right so on one thing so the, the problem is that quite some things changed since the draft revision like basically the risk 5 community with all the other companies involved for two more years continued to refine and improve it right and so the problem is this is one of the very first vector uh, extension supporting cpu which on one hand i would want to applaud them for the courage and implementation on the other hand we now have a major problem because now the first millions of this not only on this SPC but all the other all winner D1 and uh, T head 906 and maybe other cores shipped so millions of devices shipped are currently shipping and will co continue to ship for quite some years with an highly incompatible draft 071 implementation and my expectation is so the problem with that is like next next to nobody so this precious cpu which um, i could hold into the camera if uh, famous last words because i have it plugged in and running um here i see the other side um famous last words so it's still running <coughs> is it still running let's check okay it's still running um the problem is, so this vector extension is actually quite nice, as I said in previous video. The problem is, it's just an early revision, right? And so the problem is, it will, it is now and will forever be incompatible with all upstream Linux kernel bin utils for assembler linker and GCC implementation. And so there is not even upstream support for um, the vector extension, uh, which I fear. So that's probably going to be merged. Uh, for Linux next for what even is a freaking I lose overview for me 6.5 so probably support for the risk 5 vector extension either is on the way to being merged for the next major Linux kernel but it's not compatible right um, 
and it can bring some performance costs. And I would want to point out the Risk V community um, is a little bit guilty here. I would say so. I mean, not only I mean, of course, T had. T had Zemi and all their partners are a little bit guilty to have implemented that um, and shipped it. Um, how, however, I'm, I'm torn with it, right? It's not all bad things. And that is a, probably a rare thing from, for me to say. So, so normally I could sit here and it's like, yeah, it's all evil, it's all bad and the fall, the sky will fall and stuff. But there are two good things. Um, the good thing is we have something to play with at all because otherwise the other major high performance risk 5 silicon is only coming out now like sci five high five their latest implementation with vector extension and it will be more expensive and so i applaud them as much as much as i hate the situation now that there is a highly incompatible implementation that it's not entirely lost it can be somewhat saved and utilized but the problem is it's difficult now, right? Because it's incompatible with current GCC and bin units implementation. Um, so at least there is something, and I applaud them for being early and having the courage to implement this early. I just wish the situation would be a little bit differently handled. Namely, it was shouted out as early as two years ago here by Bruce Holt. And uh, commenting that here on the Risk V vspec discussion here and i would say i agree with bruce holt it could be handled a little bit better because it turns out while a lot of details changed some details are still compatible and as he proposed here in this post he even um, has here he, he ran code early as early as two years ago uh, access to a board in beijing via an engineer of rv boards chen sun here and um, yeah, RVV version basically from the 071 spec. He has the results. And so the good thing is, and there it also see yesterday's video, right? We still hand optimize code because there is currently not an auto vectorization implementation for RISC-V. Anyway, but even with this small $10 board, it can easily be like things like memcopy and with that audio video multimedia processing can be easily 60% faster. Um, 60% faster? No, this is actually a bush at zero length strings uh, in my ass. Um, three, three times faster for eight bytes, 228 bytes and close to two times 4K pages and stuff. So we're talking gigabytes, even this small board, right? We have come so far, this, this low cost, low performance implementations is moving a gigabyte a second. So it yields some improvements, obviously. And so due to changes in the way you select the element size here, so in general, um, details below, it would be nice if at least this kind of simple functions could have identical binaries across 0, 7, 1, and 1, 0. They need to be reliably an easy way to detect which version. Uh, so yeah, the problem is there is not an easy way to detect this, right? So basically, you you would like if you run some code in the Linux kernel um, on this board or similar D1 or other T hat 906 implementations, um, you would need to run code and see what the numerical output is, right? So basically, like run because this instruction said there is no notifications. I mean, or you could of course always use a device name string of like, hey, if you're running on platform like proxy BU info or whatever. But yeah, otherwise, otherwise, if like, if you wouldn't know from proxy BU info, you could run some code and observe the numeric result um, of what it should be and what it is, and then derive what implementation of RISC-V as it is. It's of course like, it's like running 386 or 286. Like remember when, like, do you remember when on Intel 80, 86, 26, 386, 486, we have run slightly like like code that intent like had implementation differences on intel's x86 and then you would observe like flex and like other like whether some pop or shift and stuff would set some flex and so on like to so the usual 80s control chart of run this is al0 or not and whatever it's like then you have an intel and you have a 386 and so on. anyway and so they proposed here early um, 
like if they would revert one, like ver like one change is where you select the element size. Um, so they match the element size set in V type, have the same sem semantics as 1.0 for eight bits, and uh, also seems like store and old unsigned load have the same encoding. So there there are some similarities, right? Like obviously in two years they have not like rewritten entirely. Just for two years since the 071 draft, they still have changed details and improved things for for other types, but. This stride loads for 8-bit elements um, seem to be doable and it's enough for mem copyright. So as much as changed and as much as it is in incompatible, actually there are some code snippets like for 8-bit elements that are even surprisingly binary compatible. And if they would have reverted one change as proposed here, um, as I point out, like millions of devices will ship with this early implementation and it would like, obviously they don't want to revert all of the work for two years, but it was proposed here two years ago to just revert, for example, one thing and make also 16 and 32, but because they, they basically also, I mean, beside lots of small details and all over the spec, but one thing is the addressing of the element size here, which they shuffled the bits around in this VTAP register. And, um, so basically revert here B8 CD 98B, make VL mole bits continuous in V type. And like with that reverted, it would have restored V type compatibility be between 0, 7, 1 and uh, 1, 0. And putting the VSEW field in the same place allows coding of any E element 18, 16, 32 bit to work on both. Ali, Baba, course, and RVV1, assuming certain other conditions are met. Um, this was shut down. It's like, yeah, we're not caring. So um, I, I understand that the Risk Five people said, yeah, you know what? It's their fault. They shipped this early stuff. Um, it's like, yeah, you know, whatever. The ship has sailed. However, I agree. Like with this one, like I would have said, okay, we're not we're not going to change everything. But this one bit shuffling thing in this one. Um, V L E W whatever type register there. Um, we could have done this right with making not only eight bit but sixteen thirty two bit element size for some certain sets of opcodes compatible, and I have to say this is a little bit of a dick move here of showing others people a finger. I really hate this because also I for twenty years I experienced this with open source projects. You send it to something to the Linux kernel and then like. For example, in the Linux kernel, there is to the day for over a decade all Seagate's drive blacklisted of not passing um, smart commands through, right? And I realized this by accident because you know, my device is affected. Um, oh no, not, not this, uh, Seagate, uh, this was a um, spinning hard drive, Seagate uh, 7 or so, the 7, seven millimeter or so external hard drive. And I proposed to revert this, right? But the Linux kernel people like, no, there were some defects drives like like basically 13 or so right because of 13 early Seagate drives not having smart path through all Seagate drive are now since today and probably for the next decade blacklisted I propose like all of them right when it's only 13 and I even maintain a list so and I, I had like for 20 years every week I have an experience like this like Linux kernel GCC like every week something else and it's super annoying right? just because some prominent VIP uh, celebrity people uh, it's like, no, we, we do it our way, our way or the highway. It's like, yeah, and this is a little bit like this, right? So in my opinion, like with this, sure, I could always agree. Like this, their argument is, of course, like, no, this bits are now no more nicely sorted. But what does it help if millions of devices you easily, in my opinion, this really sucks. They could have easily better supported this early adapter silicon, at least a tiny little bit more than nothing. And just because, no, we like this bits a little bit more sorted. It's like, yo, YOLO, who cares which play order the element bits are in this, this one uh, dressing register. So also in general, of course, there is a discussion whether this early draft implementations could be a little bit better supported in the future. I understand it's they're on their own, right? They run the dices. They are playing Russian roulette there in the casino. 
and it's like yeah they they sort of lost also not everything is lost right you can use it you just don't have a compatible bin utils in gcc and so the consequences are you can't easily use it right so the problem is also the opcodes changed so you need the problem is now like unless we add this to latest bin utils so the, the problem is the current bin utils only support the 0 0.1 final release the gcc does not even have auto vectorization and when it when it has it will only have it like maybe soon maybe the patch maybe the patch was applied the last days but the, the early auto vectorization patch only supports a handful of patterns and i believe only subtraction or addition or stuff and so like it's a very 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 early proof of concept just a little bit vectorization but anyway there will probably be zero support like given this discussion here i don't expect to, to be ever being any gcc bin support you could add this of course and the the problem is now there is a um somewhere here probably this one a t hat risk 5 tool chain let me just check if it's this one of or click around here which probably is that maybe it isn't commits like yesterday um so you only basically unless you roll your own stuff and and so on the only solution kind of solution for that is to use this overseas um t had semi maintained forks which of course totally sucks right so if you install major distributions like obviously t2 linux here for one of the best linux distributions um or other less known linux distributions like debian or so then you don't have support for that right so i'm even i'm wondering now should i create a t2 overlay to optionally allow building this uh there t hat um i i, I obviously don't want to run this on all and that's the problem right people no other no normal person um and people would want to run this on their otherwise uh, risk 5 silicon right and um why is this so strange here by the way i wanted why does this not click should this not be freaking link oh, i hate when this happens um of course it could always be added upstream but i would guess the chances for that are really small which are we even in here now thought why does this is not nah. because the bin utils branch has um sub module yes please here yeah, this sub, uh oh, whatever nonsense is going on here yeah what, what did i have this is another tab of my many tabs anyway um so they have in their t hat semi repository which i had somewhere which i didn't click it T hat semi GCC uh, probably here. Whatever I've done with it earlier. I ah, here is clickable. Why is the other not clickable? Uh, maybe it wasn't GitHub, whatever risk for the new tools. So they have here support for that, right? At T hat extensions. And I mean as you see here, right? Revert here, vectors is update vectors back to zero ten, but then this is old stuff anyway. And this patch at consists t hat extensions this patch consists of t hat extensions and yeah t hat extensions fp16 and so v0 p7 right it's it's like not really sure why they call this p this is like vector zero po r point r p I, because i was thinking patch level okay can they not have a dot maybe there are technical reasons why I can't, they can't have a dot there but yeah so i mean there is code out there to use it right it's not pretty it's not easy to use um and yeah it is what it is there is another thing um that um is bit manipulation and this also changed right so this cpu the other thing the cpus uh, support is bit manipulation do they list it here so the problem is they don't always even list it as prominently so often you need to um I believe that's what they i think this is what they call this turbo engine or some other extension is a little bit shady in my opinion and so this turbo extensions as far as i've seen consists of 
thread and memory synchronization extensions that are vendor specific and not relevant for this particular um, silicon because it has a single core anyway. And otherwise also bit manipulation. So you've seen my previous videos, there's also a bit manipulation extension because all the uh, more generic and, and so on bit manipulation stuff is not in RISC-V base either proper. And so they also have bit manipulation among other things and the threading stuff. And I believe some of them are mostly compatible. Um, so they have like rotate that you could use for some hashes like char has hashes or so. And um, some other instructions like that. And again, um, I believe one or two instructions happen to be accidentally compatible, but the others are not. Um, and not for all cases. And one one even has source and destination register swapped in the opcode encoding. But yeah, that is the other thing, right? That's the second thing, like bit manipulation. But yeah, um, the problem is, of course, that we compile binary statically, right? If we build here something, um, it's like, yeah, it's not the fastest <laughs> recompressing sets so done and take a while. Um, with my dream stuff of more jitting, like yes, Java OS and whatnot, with if we would jit the stuff like basically like Java, we could on the fly um, generate the matching bit manipulation and vector extensions. But as most binaries on your systems are simply statically compiled like this, um, you cannot on the fly really fix it, right? You can, of course, theoretically um, have hardware capabilities and have a set of libraries, but the problem is, of course, for this, like as some unfortunately say here in this discussion, um, this two million or so, this millions of devices um, will soon not matter in the grand total scheme of RISC V. Uh, devices was it somewhere here? Um, um, yeah, somewhere they said, yeah, you know, whatever this, this millions of devices will soon not make a. Um, yeah, we're not going to change the architecture to cater. I mean, it's it's ratified now anyway. In the long run, yeah, in the long run, this five and this is this was, in my opinion, in 2021, two years ago, this was really an unfriendly move here, in my opinion. At least this one small bit sorting in, in one vector type register. Not going to change architecture to cater for an implementation of a draft standard. In the long run, these 5 million or so incompatible chips will represent a tiny fraction of the RVV ecosystem. Hobbling either the software or the architecture to support them will look foolish in a decade. I mean, of course, he is half right, but as I said, this one small change to make 16 and 13 bit was just um, sorting of the exact layout of the V type of whether the sense of VTA is inverted is invisible to and no consequences to assembly language programmers or programmers or even to compilers that generate assembly languages also of no consequence of hardware and hardware design other than of course that they have to follow the spec and grab the right bits. Um, these are essential arbitrary choices and I mean you you never know of course not now I'm getting into speculative um, uh, conspiracy conspiracy theory uh, territory but what I've seen in 25 of my leave year years of my life in this profession is I, I of course I don't know it I've not been there but how this reads, in my opinion, how this reads a little bit is as this order of bids do not matter, I would not be surprised if some vendors, like some big Risk Five vendors, behind the scene, like were happy that, or at least I, I'm not saying they intentionally broke it, they certainly they were working on it, they were sorting stuff, fair enough. But in the end, they could have easily made it a tiny little bit more compatible to use it a little bit more than not at all. But they have actively chosen not to. 
and this leaves quite a sour taste. And again, it would not surprise me if, if other competitive vendors were not unhappy that the T-head vector extension is implemented was even less useful in the final spec than not at all. And if it would be companies like Intel and AMD, you could bet uh, that they've done it intentionally, right? I, I, I don't want to say they've done it intentionally. I would guess it happened by accident, but in the end, they could have fixed it more than, than not at all. Yeah. Um, last but not least, so that's basically the story how, how millions of early risk five vector extension devices um, ended up being unusable and comments there as a draft. It's expected to change. Yes, I'm... I did not say that, but they could have made it a little bit more. They did not have to break it, right? And there were call-outs of that. And this, like, they could have made it more compatible than they intentionally at the end have chosen not to with just sorting some bits differently, right? Um, and um, this is certainly not very inviting uh, to the RISC-V ecosystem, right? People always, always think it's like all the open source people working so nicely together. But in the end, these are big companies. This is sci five. Um, NVIDIA, maybe even Intel um, or other big players and, and T-Head, T uh, Zemi, uh, Western Digital and all the others involved and it's just not amazing, right? They could have, given that it could easily be more compatible, they could have been more friendly to each other, especially for this V-type bit sorting that entirely doesn't, the, the bit layout entirely doesn't matter to the implementation. Um, I only wanted to point out also, like for all the people who later see this video, um, that's the state of T hat 906 and similar such silicon. You have, you have, you will have a hard time using it. Um, you need custom bin utils and GCC, and yeah, 42. I'm a little bit. I mean, I also don't want to waste my time to supporting draft spec stuff, but given that there are a million devices and nearly nobody else will probably support this, I'm a little bit tempted to make a T2 overlay and have the only vector instruction supporting T hat Alibaba. You never know. I mean sometimes it may, sometimes it's being doing the right thing, being doing the right thing at the right time at the right place. And maybe it T2 could through clever moves like that. Um, be one of the, uh, the most popular um, choices for such silicon then if, if we're the only one who supports it. So, um, Roland uh, Ruckerbau says, I hope they will update some of those widely shipped cores. There's nothing to update, right? I don't think there's microcode, so you, you can't update this, right? I mean, the zero source, the situation was lost, right? There is nothing. Um, Guest says just don't use the VX instructions. Yeah, but just, I mean, even the mem copy, what, what I mean was just don't use, yeah, sure, just don't use the VX instructions, but you uh, you piss away some 60 to three times the performance, right? Um, it's easy set, simply don't use it. Like, like it's like using, uh, like, an in Intel CPU, like, yeah, just don't use SSE, AVX, and, and, and so on. It's like, yeah, just don't use the uh, single instruction micro, like microdata. Um, Roland says, putting out a new product with the same spec, uh, but newer. I don't think they will change the D1, I, the D1 owner, right? So I, I expect for years, this, I, I expect this all winner, um, D1, like maybe they change it for D2 or so, right? But I expect maybe even tens of millions of devices will ship. I mean, sometimes they keep the stuff in production for 10 years, right? It could be, I mean, no company changes I mean, no, no sane company. So maybe given all, I'm not the most impressed with all winners track record anyway, in general and so on. Um, Steve by the way, earlier, the vector extension 0 .9, uh, 0 0.9. No, the vector, in the meantime, the vector extensions is 0 0.1. I'm, I, I'm not, maybe it's not yet ratified, but it's 0 0.1 final also. Um, and I, my understanding is people don't expect anything to change anymore. So. While it's still not ratified, I, I expect it probably to be final. Trap pack it says the fact that the either is open source, the absolute certainly will be this kind of thing more often than certainly designers just. Ah, yeah, right. So one last thing I wanted to point out earlier. Um, 
uh, Steve Fenras can we split those vector stuff into an independent VPU of something? Well, it's in there, right? So, I mean, you could always split stuff. This D1 has actually additionally, um, they have some other not risk five based DSP in there. But then if like, if you split it further out, it's not part of the, the CPU. Um, also, this stuff is um, core either, right? So it's not like you, you run it somewhere else. And, and then you have some situation like this additionally included DSP there. Um, but last but not least, I wanted, I probably forgot to mention, I wanted to say, I rather, so as you comment, it's open source, it will happen more often than not. And this is also, I said earlier, I applaud them to having the courage to implement it earlier. And I would say, I would still, I'm, I'm more happy that it's in there and you have at least a chance to use it, although finding all this information took quite some while. Putting it all together and sure some other people compiled some information, but I first I wanted to use it until I figured all the stuff out, and this is why I made this video for more people to know. And um, I'm happy they shipped it with that and didn't disable it, right? So because it's already, what they also could have done is disable it, right? It's only like two bits not advertising it in the, Risk five supported extension registers. So they could have chosen not to expose it, right? Given all the silicon, all the logic elements are in there and simply fu fuse it off. Um, but I'm more than happy that it's in there because like if they have fused it off, you wouldn't have a chance to use it. And as it's already in there, they, they, they went through all the 10,000s of human hours of designing this silicon and validating it, hopefully. I mean, obviously, <laughs> let's hope it better is bug free and at least yeah. you never know, maybe there are bugs in there, but now yeah, we will see. But that's always the thing, right? With like open source ASICs from overseas is like, are they really validated? Like how much do they like, like Intel bugs and features is like how many security vulnerabilities and other implementation deficiencies will it have? But like, I rather have a zero, like in the end, I'm rather happy they shipped the draft 071 implementation instead of killing it and disabling it because at least like this, they give the users a choice of whether they like guest 73 says, just don't use it. Yeah, sure, just don't use it. But if you want some extra performance um, and have the proper software and so on, you can have up to three times faster vector, single instruction multiple data or string processing because who wouldn't want a like three times faster for 32 bit bytes and two times all the way through main memory instructions. So I'm somewhat tempted, maybe I add an experimental overlay um, just to continue having the one Linux distribution who supports everything the best. I hope you enjoyed this and learned something. As always, if you watch it later, leave in the comments below what you think. But I would, I would think this extension process should be a little bit better handled. Um, because somehow this sucks now, right? Sure, they are, they are guilty to having implemented that, but the whole process leaves a little bit to be desired. And given how long I personally waited also for Claire's bit manipulation extension, which also un has undergone quite some changes, which does not only include uh, rotate left and right, but also general permutations and other such stuff. I would like this also would not happen if they would ratify it and standardize it a little bit faster. For me, like all those design by committee stuff is usually moving like a magnitude too slow. And if they all would have, I know it's all, always easy to say, work a little bit more efficient and stuff, but my own work was working in other committees and ISO stuff and so on. I'm always frustrated how big stuff moves in big other big companies. And like if they have, if they would have ratified that in like one year instead of three years or stuff, um, or actually four or five years, it the, the situation with the compatibility, because I mean, obviously the companies get impatient, right? They put lots of millions of dollars into designing the chip and stuff and eventually they want to ship it. And then the committee makes last minute changes. It's 
I can understand the frustration of situations as um, companies find themselves in. They, they design CPUs and the standard changes and they want to ship something or have to ship something. And that certainly sucks for everyone, right? It sucks for the ecosystem, it sucks for the standard, it sucks for the companies. So somehow this process could be could have been a little bit better and especially like making it a little bit more comp compatible for free would have been really nice and being more friendly to each other. Anyway, hope you enjoyed this, learned something. Don't forget to share, subscribe. Hope to see you soon for all the next things to come. And have a good day and night.